Hello and welcome to day 11 of the power of being a woman. Yes, we are getting closer and closer to that special launch date and I am so excited. Are you excited? I hope you're as excited as I am because I'm really, really excited. I'm not going to lie. You know, like after writing 42 books and selling over 2 million copies worldwide, this is a pet project in my heart. You know, I was even on uh, Bill Maher's Politically Incorrect with this book when it first came out. At that time, it was entitled The Power of Femininity. And I was on the show with um, Cedric the Entertainer, Lisa Renner, one of those housewives. You know, I think she's on a housewives show now. Um, and also Rick James, remember him? Woo, my goodness, it was a wild show and everybody was focused on the themes of my book and they were just bouncing off the walls talking about the power of being a woman. And here we are years later, and it is still a relevant conversation. Uh, it is filled with biblical principles that are always current because God never changes. The way he's made us and wired us for sound as women has not changed over the decade, even though ethics and morals and mores have slid. At the core of who we are, we are still the same. And therefore, his word remains relevant in every season. And I love Bible stories and breaking down character studies um, because I think it gives us keys and principles that we can apply to our lives right where we are. And so this last chapter is called The Reward of Virtue. And as I've shared with you on every day that I always start with a poem at the beginning of the chapter. So today's poem goes like this. He watched her from afar off savoring her special brand of poetry, etched in every step she took, full of grace, vibrating with strength, a reed in the wind bowing down, but always rising again. There was something about her. He took her in as she extended her arms, willowy and gentle, possessing secret power not obvious to the undiscerning eye. Her hands wiped brows fevered with fear and trepidation and healed them. Her touch as cool as her comforting words soothed those uncertain and gave sight to the blind. She moved soundlessly through confusion, leaving peace in her wake, while those before her were warmed by her eyes and the tenderness of her smile, yet strangely moved, even changed, by her appearing, unexplainable as it were, she left no one the same, so profound was her influence, and though many could not put their finger on it, on exactly the exact word that rearranged their hearts, they were sure of the source. It was her, something about her. For long before she was announced, her presence was known, it was felt. The air changed, her virtue saturated the atmosphere, and brought rest to tongues too busy, hands too weary, minds too troubled. It was her, something about her. Not heralded, but recognized, drawing like a magnet, all those thirsty for refreshing. Her spirit gave them drink, and far more times than she knew, her closeness was enough to set the captive free, to release those with severed wings to take flight. And as she laughed in delight, they soared upon the midst of her exaltation until they reached their destination, returning to roost in the cool of her shadow until she urged them on again. And as they rose, they carried her with them, tucking her in a safe place inside themselves that they could revisit time and time again. For in the end, the power they found to fly was wrapped inside her prayers coaxed forth by her faith, birthed by her. There was something about her. Is there something about you? You know, one of my favorite character studies in the word of God is the Proverbs 31 woman. Now, at first I got to admit to you, I was evil with her at first until I understood her uh, and understood what that chapter is all about. You know, she just did too much and it was like, who can live up to that standard? Is there anyone in the earth realm that can do all of that in a day? And that's when clarity came. That that chapter was about the extension of her entire life. Not one day, not one week, 
not one month. It was the picture of a woman who understood her life in seasons and the purpose of each season. And therefore she was excellent in each season because she did not run ahead or lag behind in that particular season. That is the secret of the Proverbs 31 woman, which I go into greater detail in, in the book. But in the meanwhile, I want to take a, a look at the word virtue. That word virtue there in the Greek means chak, is chakma, which means the art of living ex in excellence. So it literally made her a force to be reckoned with because she was excellent in all that she did, recognizing each season for what it was, not pining for a different season, but embracing and celebrating the season she was in with gusto so that no one in her world felt ignored because each one of them had her attention in the season that was pertinent and critical to their growth and their excellence. When we look at the seasons of our own life, let me ask, what season are you in? I'd love to get your engagement in the chat on this. Where do you feel you are and what is the purpose of your particular season? What things demand your attention now? What things do you need to let go of in this season and focus on where you are so that when you complete this mission, you're free to move to the next level of life, living and overcoming? Um, you know, it's important for us to understand the seasons and the purpose of every relationship, every call, every assignment, so that we give ourselves completely to it. When we do that, we walk in excellence and we become a force to be reckoned with in our friendships, in our personal relationships, in the marketplace, in our communities, in our church. Everything and everywhere has its purpose at a specific time in our lives. So like the Proverbs 31 woman, we can all be women that are in season, which makes us powerful indeed in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, in places of business, in government, wherever we are. We can rise up to the occasion and be all that God created us to be. And I just wanna read this last quote um, in the end of the, of the book here, so you can see what you have to look forward to. Be free to be feminine. You know, femininity is a lost art, but it's where our power lies. Never forget that. Uh, rejoice in being everything you were created to be as a woman. Revel in it. Get downright excited about it. Celebrate your uniqueness. Embrace your softness. Cherish your tenderness. Delight in your warmth. Enjoy your laughter. Discover the beauty of your tears. No matter what size you are, appreciate every curve, every roll, every bump, every line. And then lift your eyes heavenward and worship the one who loves you most. Doesn't that sound juicy? I just love that. Being able to embrace yourself no matter what shape you find yourself in. Because life is a series of seasons and what this season holds can drastically change in the next season. And so let us be present, let us carpe diem, let us seize the day and live each day to the fullest, being who we are, celebrating who we are, and allowing that to influence the world around us in positive ways. I am so excited to have you join me on the journey of rediscovering the power of being a woman. Make sure that you get your copy as soon as possible. You can pre-order on Kindle today. On December 1st, you can order your paperback copy um, and let us continue this journey together. I want to invite you to log on to my website um, at michellehammond.com or directly to www.pobw.michellehammond.com. On that very special page that's been designed just for you, there'll be ways for you to order the book and you won't want to miss the MMA Hangout with me December the 5th on Saturday. We are going to have a powwow and celebrate the relaunch of The Power of Being a Woman. It's going to be an interactive session with women from all over the world and you will definitely want to be there. So make sure that you order your copy today. Send me proof of purchase and I will send you a free gift, a devotional to go along with your reading time. Let's celebrate being the powerful women we are, the way that God created us to be 
together. And I can't wait because there's one day left before we launch. Are you ready? I am.